I have this habit every morning I I walk out to the garage to weigh myself. That's where the scale is. I have one of those doctor scales. I've had I brought it out from Boston. I, I bought it in the Longwood uh, district medical district. There's this area of of Boston where all all the it's like hospital city. All these prestigious hospitals are clustered there. Uh, there's mass not not Mass General. Mass General is Kind of, it's off on its own by the river. But uh, I think it's called the Longwood Medical Center or area town. And uh, they have uh, Brigham and Women's. They have Beth Israel, uh, where both my sons were born. And there is Dana Farber, which is world renowned cancer for children. Uh, hospital and I, I wanted to get one of those I've always been weight conscious even when I'm heavy I'm conscious of it <laughs> I've always known what I weigh I've always kept track of it and I wanted to get a doctor scale so I, I, I went down there and there was a medical supply place right there in that area and I, I bought it and I've had it ever since and there's no place where it fits uh, well, shit, there is now. There's nothing in the house except for this area right here. Um, that's too late to bring it in. I'll be gone in a few days. Uh, but I, I, every morning I go out and weigh myself. Today I was 193, 193 pounds. It's too much. Since I shrunk, I should be around 160. I was, I was down to 156. Taking the good old cancer diet, but then it, it, I packed it back on again when my appetite returned. Ah, good evening, anime. I'm swaddled in latex, <laughs> ready to go. Must cow at the ready. Okay, well let's uh, let's do a song. Uh, it's uh, do a Randy Newman. Get your mescal ready. Cheers. <laughs> mescal. Sounds serious. Randy Newman, one of his better known ones. At least it was it was good known back then when it came out. I think it was, I think it was good known. Well known. Good known. It was good known. No one likes us. I don't know why. We may not be perfect. Heaven knows we try. All around, even our old friends put us down. Let's drop the big one. See what happens. We give them money. Are they grateful? No, they're spiteful. And they're hateful, they don't respect us, so let's surprise them. We'll drop the big one and pulverize them. Asia's too crowded, Europe's too old, Africa's far too hot, Canada's too cold, and South America stole our name. Let's drop the big one, there'll be no one left to blame us. We'll save Australia. Don't want to hurt no kangaroo. We'll build an all-American amusement park there. They got surfing too. Boom goes London, boom Perry. More room for you and more room for me In every city, the whole world round Will just be another 
American town. Oh, how peaceful it will be. We'll set everybody free. You'll wear Japanese kimono, babe. There'll be Italian shoes for me. They all hate us anyhow. So let's drop the big one now. Let's drop the big one now. All right. Peter Green wrote this song back when he was with Fleetwood Mac. The original Fleetwood Mac, which was nothing like the Fleetwood Mac as it came to be known. All those chicks. Um, and it's got a part at the end that I can't play. But, but Paul will probably cover it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> well, if you've got to rock, I've got to be your rocking horse. Think you'd like to roll? Make me your digging hole. A shaking world. When it's time to crash. Oh, when I get home at night. I guess I got to shake myself. You need some love. You must have the blues. But for one thing a good man can do, do to shake the rattlesnake shake. Yes, and do the shake. Yes, and dust away the blue. I know this guy, his name is Nick, he don't care, he ain't got no chick, he do the shake, the rattlesnake shake, yes and do the shake, yes and dust away the blue. Let's do a song. Well, everybody crying by the seven sun in the whole right burn. There is only one. I'm the one. Yeah, I'm the one. I'm the one, I'm the one, one to call the seven sun. I can tell your future for it come to pass. I can do things for you, make your heart 
feel glad I can look in the sky predicting the rain I can tell when a woman got another man I'm the one yes I'm the one I'm the one I'm the one one they call the seven sun I can hold you close and squeeze you tight I can make you cry for me both day and night I can heal the sick and raise the dead I can make you girls talk out of your head I'm the one Yes, I'm the one Seven sun. I can talk these words that sound so sweet. I can make you love and heart even skip a beat. I can take you, baby, hold you in my arms and make the flesh quiver on your lovely bones. I'm the one. Yes, I'm the one. One they call Seven Sun. I'm the one. I'm the one. Hey, one. Not number two. I'm the one. I'm the one. The one they call the Seven Sun. Yeah, my sister, I was talking to her a couple days ago. She was eight when I was born, so she remembers everything. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of things that I don't really don't want to talk to her about. Not politics. She's a she's a flaming liberal like me, but but anyway, uh, I I do like talking to her about our childhood because she remembers things and she can confer she can confirm and validate my memories and she can tell me things I don't remember because I was too young and and I I believe her because her memory when when we share memories of something we ex we experienced together her memory always matches mine um, she remembers things the way I do you know, there's, ne there's never a moment that we're, we go, what? No, that's not how it was. But we, that never happens. We remember, remember it the same. So that kind of, to my mind, it, it's a, it's a, it's a validation of what I remember. She remembers when I came home and the, uh, from the hospital when I was born, uh, and and the, the the car I came home in was a Model T. This was 1950. So that car and and they went out of production in 19. 27. So that car had to be at least, what is that? Uh, 20, 23 years old, 23 years old, right? 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Model T. And then we had a Nash Rambler. And then we had a, uh, a Chevy, a 57 Chevy wagon, which I rolled when I was 16, totaled it, rolled it. My poor dad. Remembering the time we went out to South Bend, Indiana, where my grandparents were, we, we went out for Christmas. So to my, and we had Christmas out there. There was a tree and I got a bunch of presents. Then we drove back to Carlsbad, California, where we lived. And, uh, you had an ash number too? No kidding. Hey, Pinky, Nash Rambler Pinky Shake. What do you know about that? Ha! Ah. Um, we, we, we got to ramble. So, uh, to my way of thinking, when, when we got back to Carlsbad, Santa would have come by at that house too, so I was gonna have two Christmases. See, and I didn't tell anybody, but it, uh, I didn't ask about it, I just assumed. 
So when we got back to uh, Carlsbad, and Dad opened the front door, I ran in, ready to seal my, my second pile of presents. And there wasn't one. You know, there wasn't a tree, there wasn't any presents, there wasn't anything. Hey! You know. I turned to my parents and I, and I, oh, and he, he's like, what's the matter? Well, and I explained it, you know, we had Christmas out there, but I figured Santa was going to drop by this house too and leave me a second pile of presents. So, you know, what gives? So my dad had to think fast and, and he said, well, John, I didn't want to give Santa any extra work, so I wrote him a letter and told him that he didn't have to come by Carlsbad, come by our house here because we're going to have Christmas out of Grandma and Grandpa's. What to do that for? <laughs> so, you know, there's, that's your fault. It's all my dad's fault. Poor bastard couldn't win. I was such a little shit. One summer day, she went away, she gone and left me, she gonna stay, but now she gone, I don't worry, cause I'm sitting on top of the world. Worked all the summer, worked all the fall, had to take Christmas in my overall, but now she's gone, I don't worry, cause I'm sitting on top of the world. Go, Paul. Going down to the freight yard Just to meet a freight train I'm gonna leave this town Work done got hard But I she gone I don't worry Cause I'm sitting on top Sitting on top Sitting on top of the world It's time for the Midway Joke! This guy walked into a bar. Walked up to the bartender. What do you have? Of oh, a strawberry daiquiri, please. If you don't mind. So he got his drink. And he went over to a corner booth. Sat down. A little while later, a big fella. A hard hat. Dirty. Walked in. And he said, I'm so thirsty, I could lick the sweat off a of bull's balls. And from the corner, you heard, moo, moo, moo. That was the Midway Joke. Hey, guess what? I have 100 subscribers on uh, YouTube. 
which I guess is a milestone because, I mean, I didn't notice, and you know, that's not very many. <laughs> but I do, I do remember when it was 14. But, but I, I got a, an email from YouTube. It said, hey, you just, you just passed 100 subscribers. Congratulations, you know. And it had all, it had all these balloons and confetti coming down on the, on the email. Huh, that's, that's nice. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Slipping in the darkness When they threw my friend away I was slipping in the darkness When they took my friend away They love to drink good whiskey. Whoa. While laughing at the moon. Slipping in the darkness. Take my mind. Beyond the dream, I was slipping in the darkness. Take my mind beyond the dream. Where I talk to my brother oh, Who never said the name Go Paul Slipping in the darkness When I heard my mother say I was slipping in the darkness When I heard my mother say You've been slipping in the darkness Oh, pretty soon you're gonna pay
each other. Honey, honey, you are my candy girl. You got me wanting you. Honey, sugar, sugar, you are my candy girl. You got me wanting you. All right. I can't believe the loveliness of loving you I just can't believe the wonder of this feeling too Oh sugar Honey, honey You are my candy girl me wanting you on land. Honey, sugar, sugar, oh yeah, you are my candy girl. Got me wanting you now. When I kissed your girl, I knew how sweet a kiss could be. Just like the summer sunshine Pour your sweetness over me Honey, honey You are my candy girl You got me wanting you See it again, honey Oh yeah, sugar, sugar, you are my candy girl, you got me wanting you now. time you know I was I, I was talking to this guy uh, I know this amazing guitar player unique guy that I've known since since I was first starting to play guitar in Stockton California his name's Danny Adler look him up listen to his stuff Danny Danny Adler The stuff is quirky, different. You might even say weird, but it, but it's greasy. It's greasy, dirty, swampy stuff, you know, and, and really smart and funny. And uh, I, I've been talking with him on the phone. We've been catching up, and and he was right, right. He was right there at the beginning, and so and we're. we're Swapping stories because we both, we both. I knew him, so I started playing guitar when I was like, you know, nineteen eight and nineteen years old, and he was already an established cat. He was performing and stuff when he was already when he was nineteen, twenty years old. He was already on his way to uh, uh, performing to a, to a life as a musician. But I was just thinking that the three uh, in my youth and maybe all. Utes are like this, but I, you just do what you do. And uh, I was performing, and I was going out, and I went out into the world, and I started performing. And if anybody were were to ask me what I did for a living, I'd say I'm, I'm a musician. And that was it was like a claim. It was an answer. It was a statement. I didn't think about it. It was only till later, years later, like well into my thirties, that that. That those words, I am a musician, was a realization. It was, it was different. Like, after playing for 20 years, after being a pro for 20 years, that, that phrase, actually, I would, I would feel something like surprise. 
like wow I'm a musician I get I get I guess now I really am I'm not just saying it <laughs> I mean I was back when I was just saying it but now I now I'm starting to get it it's starting to sink in you know this is the road you're on eh, I don't know Hey, Eric Parker, my brother, from another mother. Fantasy pants, got on, uh, got on a mud guard, kiss a goodbye. Do you know any of those funny diz avid face? You know what, Eric? I've been, I, I should, I don't, I don't have any of them. I should work one up. You're right. You're right. Take off your fantasy pants. Fancy pants. Uh, uh, oh my God, that's a great idea. You know, I think I was always kind of intimidated by them because, as funky as they are, they're just they're they're, they're kind of tricky. <laughs> you know, all of this stuff is quirky and kind of tricky. I'm scared. Uh, but if you tell me it's okay, like I always need you to do, Eric, I will. Okay. <laughs> I like him, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Throw some rock around, sir. Roll some rock, roll some rock around. Lay a little rocking down. I said, hold some, hold some solid rock around. Do 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 da da da. Then roll some rock around. Oh man, yeah, Danny, man. They are tricky, but worth getting dirty on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Eric, I'm so glad you're here. Anyway, anyway here's, a, here's a song I'm going to ruin uh, by Brian, Brian Adams. <laughs> I got my first real six string. Bought it at the five and dime Played it till my fingers bled Was the summer of 69 Me and some guys from school Had a band and we tried real hard Jimmy quit, Jordy got married Should've known we'd never get far Oh, when I look back now That summer seemed to last forever and if I had the choice Yeah, I'd always want to be there Those were the best days of my life Ain't no use in complaining When you've got a job to do Spend my evenings down at the drive-in And that's when I met you, yeah Standing on your mama's porch You told me you'd wait forever Oh, when you held my hand I knew it was now or never <laughs> Those were the best days of my life I just imagine Eric making fun of me now You're gonna ruin me, man You're gonna mess it up for me Shh, Stop Man, we were killing time, we were young and restless, I needed to unwind. I guess nothing can last forever, hey, hey. And now the time is changing. Look at everything that's come and gone Sometimes when I play that old six string I think about you, wonder what went wrong Standing on your mama's porch You told me you'd wait forever Oh, when you held my hand I knew it was now or never Those were the best days of my life Summer of '69. Uh huh. Yeah.
in the summer of 69. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's throw Grandpa, let's wrap Grandpa on a barbed wire and throw him in the, throw him in the fireplace. You were, you had me on the floor. <laughs> you can make that noise with your mouth. Oh, 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 let's throw, throw Grandma back in the fireplace, darling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, nice plan. I said to him. Oh man, that was a that was perfect. It was a perfect moment. Well, okay, I'll tell you. Um uh when when Eric and I were uh playing with Joe Cocker, um we uh, we got booked to play this nostalgia program for HBO at the Fillmore West. And with all these uh, used to be's uh, um, playing, and uh, and Joe Cocker, our band, we're, we were going to headline. We we're the last the last act, and I don't even remember everybody that was was on the stage or uh, the, everybody that played. There was, uh, I mean, there was Al Cooper. There was uh, the Chambers Brothers, maybe Eric will remember some others that I don't. Um, uh, there was Sly and the Family Stone with You Won't Believe Who on guitar, Buddy Miles. Isn't that weird? Donovan, uh, I don't know, and and some others. There was, there was just one after the other, all these people who had, uh, who, had uh, who were big deals back, back in those days. And uh, we did this rehearsal when everybody we're going to do a little help. This big, this big hit for for Cocker was uh, the Beatles song and a little help for my friends, and uh, um, and so that's when they were going to bring everybody out. Now it's the last song of the night, so thirty four guitars in A are all going to come out and uh, and uh, and do the song. We're all going to come out and do it together. Okay, so uh, everybody was there. Everybody came on stage for the rehearsal, for the run-through. And Elvin Bishop stood right next to me. He stood right next to me. Um, and uh, I, uh, he was close enough so that I could, I could put up my hand and put my hand on his shoulder. His, his tuning pegs were right under my nose. Okay. Now, uh, uh, by this time, I had been a professional musician for over 15 years at, the, at that point. And I was a rhythm section player, and, and, and there wasn't much that could impress me anymore, except good, musician, good musicianship. I wasn't impressed by anybody who was famous. I was impressed if they were really good. I didn't care if they were famous. If they weren't that good, I wasn't that impressed. You know. And I thought Bishop was okay. I, I never was really that crazy, crazy about his playing. You know. Uh, and... Uh, uh, but he was fine. I had nothing against him. But uh, at this time, uh, th there is, I, I, knew, I knew by now that there is kind of a caste system in the music world. Um, there are some, are the stars and the lead players or see themselves as stars. And then there's the people who are, who are just playing or like the rhythm section. And I kind of saw my, myself and Eric and people hold, holding it down for the people in front as kind of blue collar. You know, and I, I, I was a little sensitive now by this point. I was a little thin skinned. If any other musician copped an attitude with me, you know, uh, uh, or, or, or treated me as if I was less than him or her or her because they're the star, you know, and most players don't do that because most players, uh, even if they're big shots, they're musicians, too, you know, and, and they appreciate talent. So, like, take Joe Cocker, for instance. He was an international star, but he was always respectful. He was always one of the guys, because we're all in this together, you know. So he, he, didn't, he didn't evince any of that, okay? But when, in the rehearsal, when uh, Bishop 
came out and plugged in right next to me. He didn't look at me. He didn't say anything. He didn't look at me and Eric and say, Hey guys, how you doing? Guess we're going to play a song, right? Okay, all right. You know, that's all. That's, that's all. You know, just, I'm standing here. You know, I'm a person. We're not standing in an elevator. We're about to play music together. Okay? He doesn't look at me once. So then we're going through the song, and there's some other big shot guitar player over uh, uh, closer to the front of the stage, and they were trading bars. They were trading fours or something like that. And he was doing all this visual contact with him, like, oh, yeah, you, that was great what you just did. Ooh, now how about this? Mm, yeah, aren't I great? Oh, yeah, you're good, too. Ooh, how about this one? Yeah, you know. So he's really into it with this some some Johnny rock star over here, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, Al Anderson was there. That's right. I, was, I thought that was making that up. I thought I was making that up. Hedda James. Joan, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Paul Butterfield. And that's where it was. He was, he was trading shops with, with Al Anderson and Paul Butterfield. They were standing over there, uh, to the left of, of Joe. Remember, Eric? And, and, and Bishop was right here. Oh yeah, man. And then we finished. And by now, I hated Bill Bishop. Because he hadn't looked at me once. So now I was hating him. And I, I was looking at him. I was, just, I was burning lasers into his ear. You know, just hating him. And we finished. And he unplugged and gave me his back and walked away. No. Nice playing you guys. You guys sound great. Looking forward to the show. Thanks a lot. That's all. Hey, you sound great too, man. Awesome. Thanks. Nothing. Nothing. So now I hated him. I hated him. Now, now Eric was behind me. And he was busy doing his thing. But he heard about it because I told Eric everything, and I started <laughs> I started complaining to Eric right away. So Eric had to listen to that uh, uh, all through dinner. <laughs> oh, I hated Elvin Bishop. <laughs> and okay, so now we get to the show. We go through the whole show, and then everybody comes out for the big final, uh, uh, you know, orgy. And uh, uh, here's my bunghole, says Bootsy. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so same thing. We started the song. He's standing right here. I'm playing the song. And I'm looking at him and hating him. I'm just busy. I'm just completely absorbed in hating Elvin Bishop, you know. So there's this breakdown. This song goes on for about half an hour. And, it, and I hate that. I hate when things go on forever. And now there's this breakdown. And I'm, I'm, I've, reached, I've reached my limit every time we get to this part of the song because now it's going to go on for another half hour. And, it, and it's real quiet now. And it's, huh, a little help from my friend. Do, 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 a little help from my friends. And Joe's going, <laughs> and he's doing his thing. And uh, I'm playing the song and hating Bishop. <laughs> and then Bishop... I was looking at him, hating him, and uh, all of a sudden, he got this look in his face like, like he got this idea, this great idea, you know, oh yeah, I know what I'll do, you know, this would be great because everything's quiet, and I'm going to slide this in, slide, literally, I'm going to slide this in and it's going to be, oh, everybody's going to be so impressed, you know, I was reading his mind now, uh, I was projecting my, you know, my, my hate-filled, hate-filled thoughts, so I could read his mind now, well, I, I was reading his mind, he reached back, he grabbed his slide, and he picked his moment, and he slid in. He slid in. And he came to the wrong fret. He was, he, he missed by one fret. He came in like one fret flat. So it was as dissonant as can be, you know. And right there, will you help? my friends wrong and I said nice plan right in his ear and he looked at me for the first time all night he looked at me like like that I went yeah man way to go <laughs> it was great it was great you know you know how sometimes you, you, you something happens and you you think back and go shit I you, you think of all the things you could have said god damn it if I'd only said that that would have been perfect 
but it's gone. You know, you can never, you can never get it back. Well, that, that was one of those, those moments where I did say exactly, uh, it was exactly right. I gave it to him for being a prick. I'm glad I did. So there. <laughs> All right. Nice plan, man. That's exactly what I said. That's exactly, those are the exact words. Nice plan, man. And then he looked at me for the first fucking time. Yeah. Oh, you fucking bitch. You fucking, you know, you think you're such a big shot. Oh, God. I hate motherfuckers like that. I hate them. I hate them. Who the fuck do you think you are? I'm, I'm standing right here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with Eric fucking Parker. You know, you, you got one of the best low ends, the most solid pockets. You're going to hear any, anywhere. Anywhere. You know, and, we're, and we're, we're backing you up, you cocksucker. Right behind you. God, what an idiot. Idiot. In his fucking overalls. <laughs> Got me going. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm way over time, but uh, I like to end with a song, so so I will. <laughs> My, if, if you want to make me stop, you can put some tips in there. Uh, Never got up and Joey Bishop, now you're talking. <laughs> I'm glad you did that. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Billy. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> That's funny. We later said, fooled around and me. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Fooled around, fooled around and made a huge clam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fooled around and clammed again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, when I first <laughs> met you, babe, you were just sweet 16, well, you just left your home, the sweetest thing I'd ever seen. But you would not do you would not do anything I asked you to. Oh, you ran away from home. Now you're going to run away from me too. My brother's in Korea. And my sister's down in New Orleans. Well, my mother's up in heaven. Lord, what's gonna happen to me? Yes, I love you. I always love you. Ever since you. Shit called my name well but it seems like everything I do has all been in vain sweet sixteen sweet sixteen sweet sixteen sweet sixteen well, prettiest thing I've ever seen. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for dropping by. 
fooled around and fell on my ass. <laughs> All right. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for dropping by. It uh, means a lot to me to, to see you. Uh, have you guys drop by? Hey, Jim Roo. And I missed you there. It's hard. It's, sometimes I miss some of these comments. Some of the people come here. Uh, I know how painful that can be. Hey, he didn't see my comment. What's the fucking point? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was... Yeah, love... I, oh, God, I love you. <laughs> uh, Eric. Woohoo! See you in Santa Cruz. Yep. And I know. Great show. Thanks, anime. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go pack a box. Here's my theme song. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Thank you.